My name is Pamela Hartigan, and in January, I became the new head of the Skoll Center for Social Entrepreneurship here at Oxford Said Business School. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a spectacular forum, and it's only right that I tell you that I had absolutely nothing to do with making it such. <laughs> I came in when the planning process was well underway, a truly co-produced venture between the Skoll Foundation and the Skoll Center. I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of those involved, those who for, I can tell you, months on end, got up early on the US West Coast or stayed here late in the UK for all those very frequent and almost daily programming calls towards the end. Thank you for your commitment, your energy, and your pursuit of excellence. And Bruce Lowry has asked me to tell you that right now we are the sixth most twitted trend globally. So, <laughs> we're enormously proud of the fact that this forum has become the preeminent global gathering for outstanding social entrepreneurs and those who wish to support them and learn from their efforts. Speaking from the point of view of Said Business School and the University of Oxford, the forum has brought tremendous visibility to us and highlights the fact that while this university may be the oldest in the English-speaking world, it is at the cutting edge for forming the kinds of leaders we so urgently need to address the challenges we face. But I want to take a few moments to share a secret which I hope will remain secret no longer, and it's this. The center is not only an entity that co-hosts the Skoll World Forum every year. Since I arrived 10 weeks ago, I've had many people ask me about my vision for the Skoll Center, and my main message has been the following. In 2003, when the Skoll Center was created, social entrepreneurship was seen as a passing trend by mainstream business, academia, government, and the media. This is no longer the case. The world has dramatically changed in this last year. All those who believed social entrepreneurship was an interesting but ephemeral fad are finding that it has been indeed a harbinger of future organizational systems and practices. But the future has come upon us rather suddenly. And so I feel a sense of tremendous urgency about the rapidity with which we need to build upon and accelerate the work the center has done in the last five years. And what has that work been? Perhaps one of the achievements about which the Skoll Center deserves to be recognized is for being the first and perhaps the only university which explicitly provides scholarships to MBA students with a passion for social entrepreneurship and transformational change. Since its inception in 2003, the Skoll Center has financially supported five MBA students annually, and today, we have a community of 25 scholars, as they call themselves, who are influencing their ecosystems wherever they are, spreading the message of entrepreneurship for social change. This year, this group of 25, which is growing annually, has come together for the first time at this forum. And we at the center are committed to supporting them, our first line ambassadors, as they reach out and influence others. But the news is that it's not just the five MBA students a year who are interested in social entrepreneurship. The MBA program this year is comprised of 220 students. 60 of them are involved in the Oxford Business Network on Social Entrepreneurship, a student-run group that comes together to organize events and discussions on the topic. They serve as our infectious agents virally spreading the excitement about what MBAs can do to combine markets and meaning. Across Oxford, among the undergraduates, there's a mushrooming interest. We are hosting an event here, as if we aren't gluttons enough for punishment, in early April for 600 Oxford undergraduate students who want to learn more about 
social entrepreneurship from leading practitioners. And while this is exciting, it's not enough. My vision, shared by the Skoll Foundation, is that it should not just be the Skoll Scholars and the MBA students who benefit from what the Skoll Center can provide. I would like to inspire all students across the campus, no matter what their choice of study, to understand how social entrepreneurship can contribute to their field of practice and to the world. Turning to teaching, the center offers courses in social entrepreneurship to MBA students as part of the MBA program. But we're now working with Said faculty who teach core courses in finance, marketing, strategy, accounting, and the like to incorporate case studies and discussion on the importance of each of these aspects for social entrepreneurial ventures. In addition to teaching, a critically important element for the Skoll Center is research. Oxford is a community of stellar colleges focused on just about every discipline that has ever been developed and pursued. And while social entrepreneurship is becoming a legitimate field of academic inquiry, I'm interested also in pursuing applied research, practical research of the type that Dr. Pachauri, chair of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change mentioned last night in his keynote address. Social entrepreneurs and their organizations are innovative problem solvers and research can contribute to understanding the particular nature and context in which those solutions occur, are taken up and spread. So for example, where and how are social entrepreneurs contributing to find solutions to climate change, to water scarcity, renewable energy scarcity or resources, conflict resolution, peace construction, and disease prevention. As Dr. Pachauri highlighted, Oxford provides an unprecedented platform for spearheading and showcasing research done by leading scholars on the contribution social entrepreneurship makes to the host of challenges that now face us. And the Skoll Center is in a unique position to convene both researchers and practitioners, not just once a year at this wonderful forum, but year long, so that the research that is undertaken has relevance to the wider community of practice, is nurtured by them, and is relevant to those who want to pursue social entrepreneurial ventures from different disciplines. In sum, I want to work together with all of you and contribute my energies to making the Skoll Center the preeminent knowledge center in the world on social entrepreneurship, attracting outstanding research scholars, visiting professors, and brilliant, brave, and passionate students from all over. And in so doing, I'm very excited also about further strengthening our links with other top universities. First in Europe, because we are a European university, and Europe needs us. And also to keep the growing Centers University Network, keep growing that, engaging with the greater number of leading graduate schools of business that are spearheading efforts to create a business culture with a passion for social change. As many before me now in this forum have pointed out, the, un the uh, present global financial meltdown provides this unique opportunity to rebuild our economy, not from the, from the ashes, and shape one that combines markets and values. The role of business schools and the teaching and research that they pursue cannot be minimized in shaping this new direction, this new architecture. I want the Skoll Center to ensure that our future business leaders have the necessary talent, but draw inspiration from the growing number of mavericks who know that all of us want to be part of systems that are fundamentally innovative, morally compelling, and philosophically positive. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to be the mistress of ceremonies, uh, the beginning of the end of this forum, as it were. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be able to introduce you to someone who was a well-known figure in the UK and abroad for multiple reasons. He has had a stellar career in film producing memorable movies, including Bugsy Malone, 
Midnight Express, Chariots of Fire, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture, Local Hero, Memphis Bell, The Killing Fields, The Mission. He has been Chair and Chief Executive Officer of Columbia Pictures. He's recipient of the BAFTA, the equivalent of the Oscars in this country, for his outstanding contribution to the British film industry. But David has a passion for education. He's been UK Chair of UNICEF for the past seven years. He is also the founder of Skillset, which trains young people to become members of the film and television industries. In 1998, he founded the National Teaching Awards and became its first chairman. He was the founding chairman of the General Teaching Council, and in 2006, he was appointed as chancellor of the Open University. He's the founding chairman of NESTA, the National Endowment for Science, Technology, and the Arts. David is a committed public figure, widely recognized in the House of Lords to which he was appointed in 1997. And most recently, in 2007, he chaired the Joint Parliamentary Committee on the Draft, on draft Climate Change Bill. I am particularly proud to introduce Lord David Putnam, who has been a valued friend to me and advisor over the last eight plus years. David.